Okay, lesson 86, review section. <clears throat> review of 71. Only God's plan for salvation will work. It is senseless for me to search wildly about for salvation. I have seen it in many people and in many things, but when I reached for it, it was not there. Again, this, um, this really speaks to me because, you know, I, as I said, I, I come from a, an addiction background. So addiction for me is like looking for salvation, um, searching wildly for salvation. I've seen it in people. I thought people could save me. I've seen it in things. I thought donuts could save me. I've seen it in concepts like careers could save me. But when I reached for it, it was not there. And the thing with addiction is when you reach for it, it seems to give you a temporary blip of happiness, but then it, it vanishes and it's an illusion. And then you become addicted, you see, like, uh, even though my story wasn't alcohol and drugs, uh, you know, I, I pretty much identify with alcoholics and drug addicts, you know. When they first take that first drink, they feel like that they're happy, they're connected to the world, they feel merry, they suddenly feel like they're part of the world, they're in oneness. They feel love for all their brothers and sisters. And, but it wears off. And they always want to go back and get it again. So they drink another, another drink. In my one was food addiction. So I wouldn't feel so good and I'd have a lot of food. And then I'd feel a bit better. And then I'd want to go and then I wouldn't feel good. And then I'd go back to the food to feel a bit better. To get that comfort. So ultimately, when you reach for something externally, it does give you a little bit of comfort, but then really it's not there, it's an illusion. So, I was mistaken about where it is. I was mistaken about what it is. I will undertake no more idle seeking. So, so no more idle seeking means not to look for it in, in outside things, in people, places and situations. So really the Course is saying look within, inquire within. It's kind of like, you know, almost in this lesson is advocating self-inquiry. Or is advocating what St. Francis said, you know, what you're looking for is where you're looking from. So what's looking at my... Another, you know, like... In my ego, it seems like my eyes are looking out onto the world. But what's looking at my eyes? What's witnessing my field of vision? So that's like looking within. What's witnessing my thoughts? What's witnessing my body? What's witnessing all my perceptions of the world? So as you go deeper in, then the truth will be revealed. You know, the kingdom of heaven is going deeper and deeper within, not looking more and more vainly for things outside. <clears throat> So it carries on, only God's plan for salvation will work, and I will rejoice because his plan can never fail. So these are some suggested forms for applying this idea specifically. God's plan for salvation will save me from my perception of this. So you'd use it on whatever, so you'd apply this lesson, whatever your, your, the ego is currently fixated on to find salvation, you'd go, could be like God's plan for salvation will save me from my perception of donuts, or God's plan for salvation will save me from my perception that this woman can save me, or God's plan for salvation will save me from my perception that my career will save me, you see. Or another one is there is no exception in God's plan for my salvation. Like in India, they've got this thing they call neti neti. Neti neti means is kind of like what's, what this is sort of saying. It's not this, not this. You know, when, you know, like, uh, you know, you could have a, like a, an Indian guru like slapping you, neti neti. Not, don't look to a car to find salvation or, or enlightenment, or don't look to, don't look to that girl to find salvation, don't look to your parents to find salvation, neti neti. So that's an Indian thing, but here, you know, or you could use this Course in Miracles lessons. There is no exception in God's plan for my salvation, i.e. there is no exception that you'll find salvation externally in God's plan for salvation. Do not look for anything outside of yourself. This is kind of like a Western way of saying don't look to 
these things that your ego is thinking, it can find salvation. Because whatever the ego looks to, it cannot find salvation in it. Because salvation is actually deeper inside, within the ego. As you surrender the ego, then you find it enlightenment within. Another one uh, the Course is suggesting is, let me perceive this only in the light of God, God's plan for salvation. Well, you know, this is a bit of a, uh, I think they call it an oxymoron. Let me perceive this only in the light. Well, if I was perceiving it in the light, then I wouldn't be perceiving. I'd be in God's vision. So I wouldn't be in perception. But um, let me perceive this. But as soon as I see it in God's light, I'll be seeing it with God's vision, which is with the, the unity of oneness. But when I'm in my ego, I'll be perceiving it from a place of separation and dualistic, uh, dualistic uh, perception. Okay, so the next one uh, is also 72. Holding grievances is, a, is an attack on God's plan for salvation. I always found this lesson one that stuck with me. Holding grievances is an attack on God's plan for salvation. And when I first read this many years ago, I thought, my goodness, if I hold a grievance, then I'm attacking God's plan, I'm attacking what God wants me. I'm in opposition, I'm attacking God's plan. So to, to be angry at a brother, to be angry at a brother or sister is, is like attacking what God wants me to do, could be in the opposite direction. So that really helped me when I first read it. It was like, no, absolutely, God does not want me to hold on to any form of grievance or attack on another brother. Uh, and uh, that's quite, but then, you know, for me, you know, the course lessons are at a very high vibration. They want me to transcend the ego, so that would be correct. Whereas, you know, a lot of um, spiritual paths will say it's okay to be angry, so it's, it's human to be angry, And uh, but the course is like very clear, you know, like grievances are an attack on God's plan for salvation, which I agree with because it's really aiming to transcend the world. So it's, it's, it's not going to say like there, 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 it's okay to be. Grievances is God. God's happy with you holding grievances. So holding grievances is an attempt to prove that God's plan for salvation will not work. So the ego is. I would say the the ego is, is attempting to prove uh, that God's plan for salvation will not work. Yet only His plan will work by hold by holding grievances. I am therefore excluding my only hope of salvation from my awareness. So, yes, my only hope for salvation, um, my only hope for sal I'm if I hold a grievance, then I can never be, I can never experience salvation or enlightenment because they're not mutually inclusive. So as long as, long as I'm holding a grievance, I can never be enlightened. So, therefore, grievances can never take me to salvation or enlightenment. Therefore, there, there is, um, they hold no benefit if you seek the light. That's quite strong languaging because, you know, therapy would say, you know, would be quite condoning and understanding. And a lot of spiritual paths would also be quite compassionate for, for that as well. But I agree with the Course because it wants total freedom for everyone who follows it. So, no longer defeat my own best interests in this insane way. I would accept God's, God's plan for salvation and be happy. Yes, because, you know, you cannot be happy if you're holding on to a grievance. They're mutually exclusive. You know, you can't be angry at a brother and be happy at the same time. So specific applications for this idea might be in these forms. I'm choosing between misperception and salvation as I look on this. So if there was like a plate of donuts on the table, I could say to myself, I'm choosing between misperception and salvation as I look on this. So for me, what that, you know, the way I practically apply that is like, if I, I would, I would I'd frame it through the earlier lessons of A Course in Miracles, like everything in the room is equally meaningless, i.e. there's nothing that I can perceive which has special status. 
If I see anything in the external world with special status, then I'm in misperception. And I'm actually making something external, um, external. I'm, I'm worshipping. In essence, I'd say the Course would say I'm worshipping an external God. As soon as my ego projects special status onto a table, onto a chair, onto a person, onto my own thinking, onto money. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, so I'm choosing between misperception and salvation. So if everything is equal, is, if everything is equally meaningless, if nothing is special, then I'll be in salvation, or I'll be in the oneness, or the unity, or in, the, in, in that infinite, um, infinite stillness. Another one is, if I see grounds for grievances in this, I will not see the grounds for my salvation. <clears throat> so if I justify my grievances, then... Uh, I will not, I will, well, I would say I will not be in salvation. And another one is, this calls for salvation, not attack. So if my ego gets upset by something, then I should say to my ego, this calls for salvation, not for wallowing in the attack of what's seen as being wrong, according to the ego.